Hey y'all, and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're gonna look at how to do a floating origin. So this is particularly useful in games where you have the player traveling long distances. This is a little racing game that I've made, and we travel thousands of units, and we can run into what are called floating point precision errors. You'll see that the meshes start to get a little glitchy and flickery, it looks pretty weird and the further you get, the worse it gets, right? So what we're doing is we have a small script that's gonna reset everything in the world back to the origin to avoid that. Let's check it out. What you can see if you try this out is that eventually, if you get far enough from the origin, and especially in a game like this where you might be moving relatively fast over relatively large uh, units of world space, as you start to get a few thousand units away from the origin, you'll see that you start to get some kind of flickering and glitching in the rendering. Um, vertices start to kind of lose their position and it starts to look pretty weird and not very good, right? So in this case, what we're doing is every so often, every time we pass a certain distance threshold from the origin, we're resetting back. And you can actually see it happening in the scene view there as I'm driving. And there will also be in the console, there's a message that gets logged in. There we go. So it just reset, right? And it's logging in the console the delta value. So there we go, it just reset again, right? So I think we're resetting every time the player gets about 2000 units from the origin. So let's look at how that's happening. On our hover car, we have a child, which is the main camera. This is the most simple follow camera, which is just child the camera to the player. Now one note, I actually was gonna try this using Cinemachine, but ran into an issue because Cinemachine does some smoothing of the camera position resetting the origin with Cinemachine did get a little glitchy. I think I could have spent some time to, to solve it and turn off the smoothing when we reset the origin, but I felt like that was outside of scope for this, but you may run into some kind of issues like that as you use this. So here we have this floating origin script. We have the threshold, which is 2000 units, and then we have a reference to the level generator this is so that we can tell the level generator every time we reset the origin and we can continue generating the level in the correct place, right? So this is attached to the camera. And if we open it up, you'll see I actually pulled this from the Unity Wiki, which is here. And if you just search for floating origin script, you'll find it. I modified it slightly, but you know, credit to the original author, Peter Sterling, few other people have contributed to it over time. This is actually using kind of the latest version of it, which uses Unity Engine.Scene Management. I think it's slightly more performant. It requires a component of the type camera, right? It wants to be attached to the camera. And then we have this threshold here, it's 100 units. I think that's pretty low actually. And then I've added a reference to the level layout generator so that it can update that when it resets. We're using late update here. This is because we're moving the camera's position and we wanna allow for any changes to happen first. Then we're gonna make our change to the camera position in late update. Here we are storing a reference to the game object's position, the transform of the camera, and we're zeroing out the Y axis. Now, actually, I don't know if you need to do that because theoretically you could be getting far from the origin along the y-axis, right? So that's a, a note there, but in this context that does work. And then what we're checking is the magnitude of the vector three camera position. This is the magnitude of the vector. In this case, we're using it as a kind of a stand-in for the distance. And we're just checking to see if it's greater than the threshold value that we set in the inspector. If it is, meaning we've gotten far from the origin, then what we're gonna do is we're going to check in the scene manager for all the scenes loaded in the scene manager. And we're using a for each loop here. Now, some of you guys may have learned over the years not to use for each because in the past it allocated garbage. That's actually been fixed a year or two ago in Unity. So for each is back on the table. It's allowed to be used now. I still kind of don't use it out of habit, but it is a viable type of loop to use. So we're gonna loop over every game object 
in scenemanager.getSceneAt this index, get root game objects. So this is a way that we can grab only the root game objects, all the root transforms, and then move them. So this was listed as like a, a new modification to this script in the wiki. I tried it, it works for me. You know, obviously you guys should test in your own projects, but it's a little bit more efficient than null checking to check that the parent is null of everything else. So just a small optimization there. And then we just say that game objects transform position minus equals camera position, right? So we're subtracting the position of the camera and offsetting and moving everything basically back towards the origin. Then I've added this, I'm storing the origin delta, the change in origin as zero minus the camera position. And then I'm passing that through to my layout generator. We looked at the layout generator script in the last video. I have this little function called update spawn origin that passes in the origin delta. And then I'm just logging it to the console. If we go to the definition of this, uh, we can just see it's really simple. We just update the spawn origin. We set spawn origin to equal the original spawn origin plus the origin delta. And then that is used in our spawning code as part of the offset for spawning new objects. So actually really simple, but useful thing if you're making a game where you're traveling over large amounts of space and you need to manage those potential errors and floating point precision as you get far from the origin. So that's actually it in this case, nice and simple. Thank you guys very much for spending a little bit of time with me. I always appreciate it. If you uh, wanna help me get kind of discovered in the eternal struggle with the YouTube algorithm, please like this video, drop me a comment down below. Can you imagine some cool ways to use this in your project? Have you ever tried to do this? Do you have any questions about it? Let me know down below. Also, if you have any suggestions for other types of content you'd like to see on the channel, I always like to hear about those. And yeah, just thanks so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.